Hey everyone, it's Neil Barnhill with the Barnhill Golf Institute, helping you find your winning way. Today we're going to talk about a very sensitive, touchy subject, hard to say, the S word. Um, literally getting butterflies, queasy feelings just to say the word, shank. We're going to talk about how to get rid of shanking if you have that problem. It's one of the worst feelings there is in golf. I personally had it when I was playing professionally back in the late 90s, 99, 2000, with chipping and pitching more so with my chipping and I'm gonna go over some bonus stuff at the very end of this video about some things to remedy the chipping shanks which is a very common problem alright so let's dive in there we're gonna talk about the full swing shanks for you people out there that have problems shanking the ball it's scary once you hit one you don't know if you're gonna ever hit it solid again it's in your mind so let's talk about some surefire ways to work on it on the range so you can eliminate those full swing shanks so I've got a station set up here. We're gonna go over swing plane. First thing most people do, a lot of people do that shank it up tall over the years, they take the club way inside and they flip it inside. So when you take it way inside here and flip it, it's gonna cause the reverse image on the, on the front end. You're gonna flip it through here, which can cause shanks. And a shank is defined as hitting the ball off the hosel or the neck of the club and then going sideways. It's not a very nice shot. So we're going to talk, so that swing plane can cause issues. So let's talk about a couple drills we can do. One, for swing path, we got this right here. I got this set up the same angle as what I'm set up at address. So we got a hitting station here where, boom, I can go straight back. I want to be just at outside of that and up here, and then I can work inside out. Okay, so that's one thing, a swing plane. Other thing is balance in the swing. I see a lot of people dive in their toes. When they swing, they get a lot on their toes, falling forward, and that's gonna make the club get closer to the ball, make the hands go away, and therefore you hit it off the hosel. Not a good result. So, a couple of drills I'm gonna go over with you real quick. One drill, which kinda of goes against what you would think, is line it up on the hosel of the club and we're going to go straight back and then what we're going to do to hit that ball in the center of the club face we're going to have to reroute it a little bit and come to the inside right off the center of the club face there excellent that's a good way to do it okay you don't want to reach further from it because a lot of people think if i reach further from it it's going to help it can make the problem even worse it's going to make you dive even more okay another good drill yeah, I love this. This thing's really cool. Um, it's the balance rod from Eyeline Golf. Uh, you can stand on it. And what it does, it helps you from getting on your toes. So you stand on it here. Sit back. And this helps you from going, diving into it. So let's sit back a little bit. on up in the center of the club face. Okay. Inside out. I mean, you could go this way, but it definitely helps in alleviating the problem of diving into it. Okay, so that balance is a big issue. A lot of people dive into the ball, they get in their toes, they have no balance whatsoever. So right there are some good ideas. Other thing, this goes hand in hand with what I got here. Looks a little strange, but I'm going to explain what this is. I've got a head cover on top of one of these rods here. Okay, so if you don't have the balance rod, or two balls, you can use two balls instead of a balance rod if you don't have one of those. Put it right here, like that, and that can alleviate getting into toes as well. But what this head cover is, people that shank it a lot of times, their hands get further away from their body coming down over the top. And if we do this while practicing, you're gonna hit the head cover. So this promotes coming inside and keeping our hands the same distance from the ball as when we started. So again, if I go here and then I dive into it, my hands are going to hit this. It's a great visual to not hit this thing. So it's just another tool to not do that. So you understand that it kind of goes hand in hand with diving into it. But if you're able to still keep your balance and still doing this, this is a good drill to do. Okay, we're going to talk about the grip also starting with the setup, what could be causing the shank. A lot of times people that I've taught in the past that shank it have a very weak grip where the V's go at the chin. 
like this and therefore it's easier for the hands to flip or flop through impact so right here we're gonna move the hand over where the V is more at the right shoulder right hands more here gives us a stronger grip and a more solid position for our hands where we can be stronger at impact where we don't flip okay so I got a good drill here the impact bag to show you how not to flip to give you an idea of if you have that flipping issue that's causing you to shank just hit the bag a couple times at 50% speed we are like this and you can see when I hit it my weight is transferring outside left heel by 80% and also my hands are forward here so then I'll hit a ball you can tee it up if you like and just hit it you know 50 60 yards at about 50% speed keeping your hands ahead just like the back so that's a great way to get the feel of that where you feel the weight going forward hands ahead because oftentimes people that when they they shake it they go sideways they spin and then therefore they they, they flip so the bag will teach you to from the top to go lateral shift your weight and have your hands ahead okay so that's a great drill to work on I'd recommend it doing with a sand wedge or pitching wedge at about 50 to 60 percent not trying to hit it too hard okay like I told you before I had personally had a problem back in the late 90s I got the shanks uh, chipping very frustrating I almost quit the game I could not control it so probably an argument out there hey it's all mental well I would argue that point that maybe not and uh, because I would practice and I could do it right hand I get on the course and I just it would break down I'm very right hand dominant and what would happen is I'd get my weight set up properly and I just I could not control my right hand and it would flip so I decided to go left-handed okay so left-handed club but what I always told people is like hey I'm using nothing but my right hand so there is an option out there for you guys women that flip it or have that yippy I'd say yippy feeling in chipping and you practice and then you get on the course and you cannot do what you practice there are options I have changed several people to do on this and they couldn't believe it but really if you're really right side dominant like this all it is is that staying still and your left hands the weak hand anyways you're just using your right hand and it's very simple I got good enough to where I could hit it up to 60 yards and play in professional tournaments as well so I mean it took me a couple of months to get over the the weird factor of playing to the green and then all of a sudden this guy's chipping left-handed well I got really good at it um, and I had people at the end of the round asking how they could learn how to do it because I, 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 I got very very good at it and it's something if you if you can't get rid of those yips this gives you another option so I just wanted to throw that out there throw me an email send me an email ask me questions about this I'm gonna put together a video series on chipping right-handed and left-handed and different things to help with the yips or, or the flipping or the shanks with that so look forward to hearing from you until next time check me out at barnhillgolf.com and give me some feedback thank you